welcome to NPTEL. Myself, Dr. Joyanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Today, we will discuss advanced processes. So far, we have mainly discusses on different materials, their fundamentals and many of the different aspects and mechanisms involved on the application of those materials. Let us say like one of the very common advanced material like uh, nickel titanium shape memory alloys. This is also called as a smart material and there are some processes linked with that. However, on the other hand if we talk about bulk metallic glasses the processing of bulk metallic glasses require high undercooling means from the liquid state we have to cool it very fast so that we can bypass the crystallization process or avoid the crystallization process and this is one of the such non equilibrium process. So, today we will uh, discuss mainly on those kind of different processes for synthesizing advanced or smart and functional materials. So, uh, these all these advanced processes uh, can be uh, classified uh, depending on the starting materials. What I want to mean that we can start with atoms and those atom can keep on joining together to make and grow to a larger length scale. So, from a atomic scale we go to nano scale to a ultra fine scale and then to a micrometer scale and keep on growing that so that it can reach up to certain length scale of its application. On the other hand we can also start with a very bulk billet or let us say 1 meter cube of a material and then we process those material so that the structure can be tuned to the scale of a nanometer. If I simply talk about let us say the typical nano materials ok. So, where the, the grain size or particle size reaches below 100 nanometer 100 nanometer. So, we can start with atoms or molecule and then we can uh, we can start from such kind of molecule and then by some processing technique we can make those kind of clusters and then by some other secondary processing we can process some 3D bulk structure or bulk nano structure. However, definitely it has to go through many different processes and so this these processes are mostly concerned with a bottom up approaches. A bottom up approach means that we start with this molecule or atom and we can reach up to a bulk scale structures. Now, on the other hand let us say we can start with such kind of bulk solid where the grain size is very big may be 300, 400 micrometer or maybe even 1 millimeter and then by some processing technique we reach to a very fine nano scale uh, microstructure and these nano scale let us say in the range of 100 nanometer. And since here we start with a macroscopic uh, sample and then uh, we make these processes or adopt some processes for processing of bulk nanostructure solid we call it as a top down processes. So, here I basically list these uh, some of these bottom up or top down approaches like let us say the, the mechanical alloying rapid solidification severe plastic deformation these are common uh, top down approaches 
uh, the, the, the question comes here that um, a rapid solidification we have um, uh, already know this term uh, during discussion on bulk metallic glasses. So, here we start with a liquid and then this liquid actually um, cooled very fast uh, at a certain cooling rate uh, so that we can produce those kind of bulk nanostructure uh, or metallic glass too. Now, in case of these bottom up approaches, there are several approaches like inert gas condensation, physical vapor deposition, chemical vapor deposition, these are very common vapor deposition technique and sol gel technique and pressure sintering or plasma sintering or plasma spraying and so on. So, um, in case of let us say uh, if we again think about these top down processes uh, means uh, from a larger scale we can uh, tune these finer structure inside it. So, some of the processes again can be classified on the thermodynamic as aspect during processing condition. What I want to mean that I can take a liquid and I can cool that liquid infinitesimal small. So, very very small undercooling can be given to a liquid and we can grow a larger single crystal. Okay. So, this is a typical crystal growth phenomena. On the other hand, I can simply take the same liquid and cool it very fast so that I can avoid crystallization okay. or maybe I cooled in such a way that it simply touches the nose of the TTT curve and so I get nano clustered crystalline clusters inside a glassy matrix. Uh, so, what I uh, would like to depict here with this diagram that this is a crystal and, and uh, let us say if I cool very slowly then I can enter into that crystalline uh, phase whereas, from the T L that is the liquidus temperature if I cool very fast and glass transition temperature is somewhere here then I can get a glass. But I am talking about processing of some nanostructure where the cooling rate has been adopted in such a way that part of the microstructure uh, transform into uh, very fine nano crystal uh, where the crystal we do not allow uh, them to grow because of the rapid solidification and very low temperature where diffusion of atoms are very less whereas, the part of the microstructure solidified into glass. So, I will get a crystal plus glass in that case. So, I am talking about such a process. Okay. So, so, there are enough opportunities of these processes, however, the thermodynamic condition has to be satisfied. So, in that case, if that very faster cooling can be given, we usually call them as a non-equilibrium process, okay, where we somehow try to reach to a microstructure or a thermodynamic state of the material that is in a metastable condition. So, um, let us say we have already discussed about different metastability. So, from, from one metastable state we can reach to another metastable state by passing some of these activation energy. So, these are some of the important aspect. So, uh, these are the um, bottom up approaches all these they are also the non equilibrium processes and also rapid solidification, mechanical alloying these are also the non equilibrium processes to achieve let us say the, the, the bulk um, finer structures. Now, another aspect of uh, mechanical alloying that we start with a let us say micrometer or millimeter size particles and then we take a grinding medium with let us say very hard uh, spheres or balls and then we uh, simply try it to, to make a finer size of those particles that is a typical ball milling. However, we can also start with A or B element together of two different composition and try to alloy them together to make a bulk. Uh, very fine nano powder which are already alloyed by A and B. Okay. So, I am talking about solid state alloying. Okay. So, both are in the solid state and both have different composition may be one is a pure element like nickel another one is let us say the copper. So, I took these two and then two different particle with one is nickel another one is copper. I mix them physically and using a grinding media and by, by introducing very high energy impact, we alloyed those powder. It is also possible. 
Uh, so, in a solid state. However, all this process has some benefit uh, positive and negative side uh, and, and so one has to consider all these aspects. So, um, this is a very uh, simple schematic to, to show that from a macro scale to a nano or atomic scale, we can start building those blocks in order to achieve uh, a bulk structure. So, that is possible and tune the microstructure. So, let us start uh, with one of these uh, vapor deposition technique and how this process actually um, uh, help to, to, uh, to develop some advanced materials. So, like um, the first one is the physical vapor deposition. So, the name itself says that there is a need of vaporizing the species which has to be deposited in a, in a, in a preferred place. So, we need a heater and the, the evaporant material are kept on a, on a crucible and then we allow some heat to pass and then those evaporated atoms goes towards the preferred place where it has to be deposited and then it finally deposit on a substrate. So, this is the after deposition this material atom goes and preferentially deposited on a substrate. So, for uh, this you can see that if we need to develop a, a, a functional nanostructured coating, then we can adopt such a process where the atoms are molecule which will be evaporated from a place and then depo goes to a place where it has to make the coating and, and a thin layer of such material can be deposited from a vapor species on the object to be coated. So, the vapor is created maybe in a, in a high vacuum chamber where there will be no interaction with some other species or molecule or some other air molecule that should not interact with them. And a direct heating or let us say electron beam heating we can provide to these vaporizing species and the vapor basically condense on the cold substrate uh, until it acts as a sink uh, of the heat. Uh, it, it will never be possible. So, so we, we can uh, deposit on those substrate and, and uh, the steam from a hot bath condensing like a, like a uh, bathroom mirror that is simple example uh, when we go to any um, uh, for, for in a bathroom actually you can see that that, that um, the, the vaporizing uh, water molecule that simply goes on the mirror and deposited there. Yes? So, this is a simple example of that. So, so, the work piece here act as a cathode and the metal ion who is as a source material is, is like an anode and so inert gas ion are accelerated uh, may be accelerated using some electric field on this target material to be deposited and the ejecting ions uh, onto the component surface and by introducing we can also introduce some reactive gas into the media or let us say that that compound uh, can be formed. So, uh, I can give you one example of such very interesting um, vapor deposition technique like um, we can uh, simply take a sputtering of titanium. So, titanium will be vaporized and then we incorporate nitrogen into it okay? and so this nitrogen and titanium they goes together and make a tit uh, titanium nitride uh, uh, coating on, on, a, on a substrate and this is something very interesting phenomena actually. So, uh, metal evaporated by heating or maybe it can uh, go for some sort of ion bombardment uh, by uh, you can use some laser aberration uh, to, to goes into the substrate and this uh, deposited layer uh, we can choose that uh, depends on the time of deposition and we can uh, may make something like few nanometer length scale thickness. So, uh, we can simply tune the surface properties of, of steel or any other uh, substances uh, by some coating. So, deposition technique or physical vapor deposition technique is one of the very interesting technique and uh, um, uh, for such kind of advanced processes. Now, uh, very similar vapor deposition technique however, a reaction is involved here the reaction could be with the substrate itself. So, in that case uh, this is called as a chemical uh, vapor deposition technique. Uh, so, the basic working principle here is um, uh, the, the CVD technique that a reactant gas mixture 
that uh, bought very close contact with the surface to be uh, deposited or coated. So, I can give you one example like A B 2 this is a composition let us say A B 2 is a composition and I take it as in the liquid state okay. and then uh, let us say the, the, the liquid uh, goes into the gas phase by uh, using some heating source okay. and um, since um, this deposit need to be formed on a substrate and so, uh, in this case uh, this decomposes and deposited on a dense pure layer of thickness in the range of nanometer scale, but the deposit can be formed by a reaction between the precursor gases in the vapor phase or by reaction with the vapor and the surface of the substrate. So, these are the two possibilities. So, I first from liquid it goes to a gaseous state and then it enter into a chamber. So, I have two different possibilities one possibility that it react with the environment itself hmm, and then deposited or it can go and uh, and make a reaction with the substrate. So, uh, you basically need a heterogeneous reaction and uh, where it has to react and then the uh, diffusion uh, will occur and then we can simply build up a, a particular uh, thickness on the deposited uh, surface. So, here you can see the processing parameters are must be very much important because you have to control many of these aspects here. So, uh, let us say the temperature of the substrate that may be one very important and the gas you want to incorporate in the chamber. So, the temperature somewhat in the close of uh, let us say 500 degree centigrade for a metal organic precursor so that it can be evaporated. So, so moderate temperature CVD can be done or let us say the plasma assisted CVD uh, in, in case of a plasma we can go up to higher temperature metal and compound can be used here for deposition or we can simply take a leisure uh, for this vapor, uh, vapor deposition technique where we can reach to much higher temperature for again for the metals and compounds. So, uh, coating are formed by these kind of uh, um, uh, PCVD that is the plasma assisted uh, uh, CVD technique and here the method typically uh, produces some nanocrystalline or amorphous microstructure. So, uh, I show you here one of these reactor part where the deposition are, are taking place. Now, definitely some uh, um, effluent gases will be created and that gas uh, will go out of the chamber with some uh, after the reaction has occurred and, and, and some deposition has been took place. So, uh, these are the two uh, very important vapor deposition technique for, for let us say uh, producing some coating on the surface and very hard coatings. If the coating is, is amorphous in nature and if you diffuses into the surface then the interface strength will definitely increase. Uh, on the other hand uh, let us say uh, in an inert atmosphere and uh, uh, we can also condense these uh, these molecule on on and collect those molecule which deposit on a some surface by using some scrappers. What I want to mean that I uh, took a liquid and then I vaporize the, the liquid. The liquid goes and deposit on a on a on a finger or cold finger. Uh, means uh, there is a need of a uh, sink heat sink actually uh, because uh, the deposition can took place only when the atoms will release the energy and the energy will be absorbed by that cold finger right. And then after uh, some amount of deposition we can simply take a scrapper and take out all these clusters or nanoscale clusters and, and uh, collect together. So, this is a, a typical inert gas condensation process and I show you here um, that uh, how uh, it really took place. So, um, first we take let us say uh, um, a evaporation sources, these evaporation sources we can take let us say 1 and 2 of 2 different species okay? because we want to make a, uh, um, a, a composition which should be a uh, mixture of these 2 different species that is also possible or maybe the single species. And so, the, the 
the the the evaporation will take place uh, from those pieces and goes uh, and deposit on the cold finger. So, this is a cold finger um, which is the uh, heat sink and after some amount of deposition with a regular periodic interval, I can use a uh, scraper which take away all these uh, clusters uh, of particle and simply it uh, is collected at the bottom. Okay. And this can be done in a in a, a inert uh, condition uh, and we can introduce some inert gas during this whole process. So, cluster of those atoms uh, that can be done in that case. We can also uh, modify this kind of inert gas condensation technique where um, we can pass through very small orifice and uh, here the pressure is less than the pressure here. Okay. So, when uh, the, the pressure it goes to a lower pressure region then it will expand right. So, from a high pressure to a low pressure and it will expand and then uh, we will get individual particle in a much better form. Okay. So, so that is also a, a possibility. So, so like here these are the two different chamber and uh, let us say helium inert gas will carry all these um, um, vaporized species uh, after evaporation it goes to a small orifice and it uh, deposited here uh, as cluster and this is like a collection tray. So, these are the cluster that formation by the vapor phase expansion uh, from a oven. So, here the pressure is basically higher than the pressure here. So, this is P 1, P 2, P 1 is higher than the P 2. So, I have two different chamber and by maintaining this uh, difference in the pressure we can simply uh, make form those clusters. So, in a inert gas condensation technique the evaporated atoms are, are carried by a high pressure helium or inert gas which expand from a nozzle into a low pressure chamber at a supersonic velocity because whenever we pass this helium gas then from a higher pressure to lower pressure it, it goes very very fast without condensing in any of the localized places because we want the maximum efficiency of the process that all that uh, atoms uh, or molecules that is going to be vaporized should be deposited in the in the in the in the chamber and that will simply yield the process so the adiabatic expansion here of the gas uh, has another help or assist that uh, once the gas expand by volume then temperature will automatically decrease right so, so causing that evaporated atom of cluster uh, to a to form a nanometer scale cluster in the in the environment itself actually right. So, it does not need to be deposited on a cold finger. So, they form cluster inside during uh, going to the next chamber. So, that is one of the very benefit of the process. So, we really never uh, need any assistance of such a cold finger here because it is going from a higher pressure region to a lower pressure region and there is a expansion of the gas actually because the metals will feel cool. So, uh, the nano cluster that form from a uh, cold finger and harvested by the scraper or collector that is a typical process for a, a typical inert gas condensation technique. So, um, uh, these are the three uh, very important uh, process like the vapor deposition or inert gas condensation for producing such kind of bulk. Uh, uh, structures including uh, coating and so on. Now, uh, the sol gel process is another technique uh, for producing very bulk scale uh, 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 powders or, or uh, nano scale uh, particles. So, um, the, the end product uh, can also be tuned it could be also a network like nano structures. Uh. So, uh, we not only produce a powder of such a scale, but we can also produce uh, um, using sol gel process. So, here um, the working principle that we need a metal alcohol oxide um, solution uh, and then we uh, polymerize it or hydrolyze it and so we create that sol and then if we allow precipitation of uh, the uh, in a precipitation process then we will get these discrete nanoparticles in the solution. Okay. 
However, we can also add some gelling agent and then these uh, suspended uh, nanoparticle they will basically form some network like structure and if we evaporate those solvent then the residue product will be will be like that kind of nanoporous membrane or network like structures. So, in that case actually the precursors are usually the inorganic metal or salt like here we have uh, prosidonium and, and titanium compounds uh, with zirconium or lead. So, we can take all these three together and then we can add some gelling agent uh, NH4OH and uh, ultimately after the solvent evaporation we will get such kind of fiber compounds. Okay. So, this is a very typical sol and gel process. However, if you need uh, let us say only the, uh, the discrete nanoparticle which may be consolidated later on you can you really do not need any gelling agent here. So, the precursors here they are subjected to polymerization reaction that I am repeating again uh, this polymerization reaction is very important to form a colloidal suspension this is actually called as a sol. So, after polymerization and finely dispersed particle that kept suspended by adding some surfactant. So, that the particle should not uh, may form any cluster together right. So, they should be individual suspended particle in a in a in a sol. Uh, so, suspension um, uh, agent uh, should be uh, uh, should be uh, added or let us say some spoon coating on a substrate can also be done. So, the sol is converted uh, to a gel by some chemical treatment to disable the surfactant uh, and to create a extended network of connected particle throughout the solution. Whereas, the evaporation of the solvent in the next step uh, when we need such kind of network that can form a dense or nanoporous film. So, sol gel processing technique can be used to make nanostructured layer or coating as well as nanoporous uh, membranes. So, these are uh, the uh, very useful technique for uh, direct synthesis of the nanoparticle. Now, uh, this pressure sintering uh, is also another advanced process. However, this is a process uh, linked with let us say scaling up process means I can start with some powder uh, of precursor powder and then I can scale up uh, the, the length scale of the product final product. So, here uh, usually uh, we can also use some graphite mold or, or any other uh, material we can also use uh, um, and then we have a vacuum chamber. So, we take this powder and using some pressure we, uh, we uh, assist some sintering process with the assistance of some temperature actually. So, so the capacitor bank is here and, and the upper punch is here. So, pressure uh, improves the, the sintering process. Uh, so, powder can be consolidated using this kind of process inside a die. So, the die can be from different metal it could be a tool steel, it could be a graphite mold and so on. So, the in a pressure sintering process the standard way to consolidate powder this is a very common technique uh, and uh, like another technique you may have heard that is the hot isostatic pressing. Okay. So, so, there the temperature is also used. So, allowing the time for the structure to coarsen. So, um, we, we need a, a heated die here. So, uh, these are the induction uh, coil and the powder is, is simply uh, um, um, consolidated uh, uh, during application of the pressure. So, the, the, the why we need application of pressure in that case. Uh, so, if you apply only temperature for sintering then the, th the density uh, of the, the of the sintered product will be very less. So, may be 80 percent, uh, but if we apply pressure during uh, sintering then not only the mass can be transported, but uh, the atomic diffusion can also be uh, enhanced at a higher temperature. So, with that process we can reach to near theoretical density uh, depending on the material and the and the parameters of the experiment you have chosen. However, there is also another additional technique with that we call it as flash sintering process. So, during this process the powder is basically compressed in a die through which a bank of uh, such capacitors are discharged and the, the blast of heat is given at a flash and it generate actually a resistance to this packed powder is good enough to create a good bonding 
without leaving enough time for serious coarsening. So, um, one of the very important aspect of consolidation of the nanostructured powder that they always uh, prefer to have a grain growth. So, if a nanostructure causes grain growth that it does not remain as nano. So, it become basically microscopic scale. Okay. So, so, from 10 nanometer we can easily get basically 100 micrometer. So, that is not our intention of sintering. Our intention of sintering that we need to reach to a theoretical density by maintaining the structural unit or the grains to be in the nano scale. So, for doing that this flash sintering process is very important process that at a flash we uh, at a very sudden instant we provide the heat which causes immediate uh, um, packing of those powder without any grain growth because grain growth is a diffusion control process and, and it requires some time. So, we do not allow that time uh, to cause coarsening process. Now, uh, these are all these process we are talking about basically some from a very fine uh, particle or cluster to go up to the uh, higher side. So, now uh, another process is the plasma spraying. In this process, um, here a plasma means basically a vaporized ion or atom that is a, a force to go in on a substrate. Okay. So, for coating purpose let us say. So, there are many different coating thermal barrier coating many of these uh, plasma spread coating we have discussed uh, for improving the surface properties of super alloys for higher temperature you may recall those discussion. So, here we have a cathode and there is a anode and the powder is injected we create a plasma and this plasma is thrown on a surface. So, here the evaporation of the powders that is basically the target material and the tungsten wire that act as a cathode and the copper sheet that act as a anode. So, here what we are talking about and then hypodermic needle that is a evaporation of the powder delivery that basically uh, uh, lands this powder and on the other hand the high voltage power supply is required and the gas flow these are let us say some of the parameters that you can choose and uh, these are very much needful. So, on the other hand this plasma spread gun that comprises of a copper anode and tungsten cathode. So, this is basically tungsten and here we have a copper and both of which are basically water cooled uh, near the plasma actually. So, this plasma require a gas and that gas has to be passes through that anode uh, which will carry those uh, plasma particles actually. So, here we have argon, nitrogen, hydrogen or helium that flows around the cathode and through it passes through a nozzle um, and, and goes and heat on the on the surface where the coating has to be done. So, the plasma is only created when a very high voltage is applied. Okay. So, that basically due to some voltage discharge uh, that causes localized ionization and a conductive path for the DC arc to form between the cathode and the anode. So, this plasma is created in this place in this place um, and the conductive path for the DC arc to form this cathode and anode the resistance heating of this arc causes the gas to reach to extreme temperature and dissociate and ionize in order to form this plasma which basically goes and on a cold substrate it basically um, deposited. So, advantage is uh, definitely the wide range of material can be sprayed or coated as a refractory metal like tungsten, ceramic, zirconia uh, we can use that for the thermal barrier coating and the disadvantage is that the plasma stress process is potentially rather complex and the cost is definitely high. However, we can create a high, highly sophisticated uh, advanced coating on the, on the material. So, if you just have a look uh, at the temperature scale then you can realize that how much temperature we can reach here. So, something like 5000 K to 6000 K with a turbulent jet. So, this is something like a temperature classification on its plasma jet and the temperature basically falls as the plasma if you are away from this uh, plasma uh, um, process. So, here I show you on a on a turbine engine how these plasma are spread on, on a on a material. So, the, the working principle or the efficiency that in, in Q uh, that is the you know, performance of a plasma jet are linked with the, the gradient along the uh, arc column uh, divided by the pi multiplied by the arc current that we applied and D is the nozzle diameter 
and A is basically the thermal conductivity, C is the uh, Cp is the specific heat of the gas that is conducting and uh, the glass flow rate and, and so the gradient along uh, the arc uh, column um, current and so on. So, there is uh, some constant with that. So, here all these process parameter and variable has to be optimized, so that we can get a effective uh, condition for plasma spraying. So, this powder is basically feeded on the plasma frame that most commonly on a external powder port that is mounted near the nozzle to exist. And uh, the powder uh, is so rapidly heated and accelerated that the spray distance can be formed let us say something in the range of 25 to 150 millimeter. So, these are also some of these advanced technique uh, or advanced processes for processing uh, some coating techniques. So, with this we finish our discussion today. We will continue the discussion of different top down and bottom up approaches in the next class. Thank you.